I'm back after my one week hiatus. Did you miss me? Before I begin this video, I just want to say that one of my heroes passed away this week and I'm deeply saddened by it. I've been a Foo Fighters fan since childhood, I've been to see them three times and I can pretty much map out my life in Foo Fighters albums. They've always brought me a lot of comfort in hard times and they're doing so now as I and everyone else come to terms with Taylor's death. I didn't know whether I was going to bring it up or not, but the Foos have shaped such a big part of who I am. I've always admired their absurdity and creativity, and I'm hugely inspired by how off the wall and down to earth they are at the same time. So yeah, thank you for the music Taylor and so much more. Time for a very awkward and purposefully rubbish segue. So this is not what I planned to make a video about at all, but it's just so big that I have to. We are living in the aftermath, the afterglow, the reddening handprint of the slap that was heard around the world. The slap that has such a massive cultural impact that it is pretty much 90% of all news muse what is a muse i mean i was josh safty's muse when he wrote on kajal right it has been like 90 percent of all news and social media this week and i guess i decided i was going to contribute to that i am not going to be trivializing violence i'm not going to be discussing whether will smith was right to do it whether chris rock deserved it none of that i think this slap is an insight into how our world works at the moment and i am going to try to unpack that I mean, if you don't know, I feel like you have a lot more catching up to do than just this slap. It was pretty unmissable. But for the extraterrestrials out there watching this show on your little space TVs, hi! For over a hundred years now, we humans have practiced an art form called film. It's where we watch other humans pretend a situation is happening. It's one of my favorite things, I studied it for five years and I went into the field of creating it. An Academy Award, or Oscar as it is also known, is the most prestigious accolade that you can receive for filmmaking. It is taken very seriously by some, and not so seriously by others. On Sunday night, comedian Chris Rock decided to tell some jokes before announcing the winner of the best documentary category. One of his jokes was that he couldn't wait to see Jada Pinkett Smith in G.I. Jane 2. It was a reference to her hair because she has a shaved cut as one would get if they were joining the army. And in case any intergalactic beings out there are wondering, this is not a funny joke. It has the energy of pointing at ripped jeans and saying, there's a hole in your trousers. It could easily caption the picture of Matt LeBlanc looking like a toxically unfunny uncle at a family gathering. That you got a shaved haircut, hen? You look like G.I. Jane? <laughs> it's low hanging fruit and it breaks the cardinal sin of comedy. It punches down. The reason Jada Pinkett Smith has a buzzed haircut is because she has an autoimmune disease, alopecia, which causes hair loss. She has spoken about how this has affected her life and her confidence, and it's quite widely accepted that people who go through this have quite a hard time. It's been revealed since that Chris Rock didn't know this information. But once you do know the information, it takes the joke from being just unfunny to insensitive. So at first when it cuts to Will and Jada, it looks like Will's laughing along with the joke, but Jada's given a bit of an eye roll. She doesn't feel the need to fake laugh at this terrible joke. In the next few moments, Chris goes to continue on with his presentation, but then Will Smith storms the stage, slaps Chris Rock in the face, returns to his seat, and proceeds to shout at Chris to keep his wife's name out his effing mouth. It's an intense scene. Guys, also, it's just started snowing here. It's like the 30th of March today. What's going on? I have watched this clip so many times and it still perplexes me. The whole thing happens really fast, but that is what it is as it plays out. So immediately after, there was this really awkward moment where everybody at the Oscars, everyone watching from home, Satan standing at the side of the stage, were all wondering, was this a bit? Did they plan it? Our human minds were trying to figure out how Will Smith could go from this to this in a matter of seconds. 
How could he build rage that fast? It must have been a joke, right? But it didn't land like a joke. YouTuber Penguin Zero, also known as Moist Critical, who is an expert in slapping. He does a commentary series on slap championships from around the world, so he knows his slaps. And side note, the fact that there are slap championships makes me feel like maybe slapping is the form of combat of the 2020s. Anyway, Penguin Zero breaks down the moment that Will walks up to Chris and you can see that Will does not give a tell that he's going to slap and Chris does not expect it. Chris is even leaning in as if Will's going to tell him something. So, we've come to terms with the fact that it's not staged. Will really did take his anger out in the moment and it's said that at one of the intervals, several celebrities and some of Will's PR team were talking to him to sort of give words of comfort and perhaps discuss what to do next. Now, in this day and age, we've become very accustomed to the public apology. This is usually in video form to reach as wide an audience as possible. Someone does something that offends some people, so they curate a response and post that out for everyone to see. But Will Smith might have broke the record for fastest repentance in the West. Moments after he slapped Chris Rock and shouted through the theatre, he won Best Actor. So he got up and he used his speech to apologise to the Academy and his fellow nominees. He compared his outburst to the character that he portrayed that he has now won the award for and also used his speech to talk about love, protection and divine purpose. I think this was sincere. I think that Will reacted emotionally and immediately regretted it. One of my favourite books is So You've Been Publicly Shamed by John Ronson. And in it, after exploring and talking to people who have been massively publicly shamed, he talks about a conversation that he had with a prison inmate. And there's quite a profound remark that comes from that, that acts of violence are an attempt to replace shame with self-esteem. I think about that statement a lot, and I think that's what played out in this slap. At first, Will was laughing along, but as the shame set in, the mission then became take back the power, don't let people laugh at you. Another ideology that I like to link in with this is Brené Brown's interpretation of shame. She says that shame is unwanted identity. It's a feeling that you or your actions are being perceived in a way that you don't want them to be. So in this instance, Will feels a sort of unwanted identity because the room is laughing at his wife's hair as if it were some bad choice that she made. And he appeared to be going along with that at first and placing further embarrassment on his wife. And that's not who he wants to be seen as. Also, side note, I did not know she had alopecia. I just thought that she'd buzzed her hair and I thought it looked fierce. I thought it suited her so much. I genuinely didn't think that this was like a stupid haircut. I don't, that's why the joke is just so unfunny. So I think that was Will's first bout of shame. And then from that, he reacted emotionally, slapping someone and shouting aggressively. And so I think he experienced a secondary shame at people now perceiving him as a violent individual. So Will is making his apology whilst the news of the slap is travelling around the world. This is the zeitgeist now, and the event itself has transcended all context. J.R. Hennessy for The Guardian wrote about how the moment is an example of context collapse, where infinitely diverse audiences can occupy the same online space, consuming the content in a variety of different ways. Personally, I'll admit that I didn't think the slap was that big a deal at first. I saw the clip the morning after the show happened and I thought, huh, that's weird. I bet you it'll be parodied on TikTok later. I'm not saying that violence should be normalized or is okay, but real human on human violence is shown on TV for entertainment all the time. Whether it's Jerry Springer type shows or documentaries like Tiger King or scripted reality like Keeping Up With The Housewives or Keeping Up With The Kardashians. Real housewives. Wow, I really blended those shows. It's the same thing. One person actually tweeted that if the slap was shown in an episode of Drag Race, the show would probably be nominated for an Emmy. And that's not untrue. We tune in to television to see this sort of stuff all the time. And that's why I didn't think that the slap was anything special. But contrary to my expectation, it did not fade from the limelight at all. The slap has been glorified, condemned, memed, gift, supported, reviled, 
compared to the Russia-Ukraine war, remixed into a song and worked into thought experiments of what if Chris Rock was, insert vulnerable demographic. It is currently the Wednesday after the slap took place and I now expect that it will continue to gather steam for the next three weeks. It has taken over our collective reality. Not only do infinitely diverse audiences interact with the moment, but the moment is exploited to cater to infinitely diverse audiences. Are you deeply offended by the slap? Here are articles on violence statistics, Chris Rock's past with being bullied, and Jada's response. Do you think the slap is funny? Here's tons of memes about it. Here's Will's outburst on a t-shirt. Here's the remixed song. Do you think the slap needs unpacked? Here's a YouTube video breaking down what it means about society right now. I know I'm feeding the machine. And as for taking sides, this has become quite risky for people to come forward about. According to journalists at the Oscars, no one was talking about it. The attendees were completely avoiding the subject in order to not take a side. Because if you do, then your behaviour is then examined. Zoe Kravitz was vocally disappointed in Will's violence, and from there people have swiftly pointed out that she had some really inappropriate things to say about Will's son, Jaden, back when they starred together when he was 14. And this is how it goes now. Almost everyone in the public eye will fall from grace to someone out there. Sometimes it's in a really big way exposing corruption that almost everyone agrees is not okay. Sometimes it's in a less definitive way that only really reaches certain people. And it leads me to believe that all humans are simultaneously good and bad. No one is perfect and no one is ever finished learning and growing. And sometimes it's okay to not know how you feel about something yet. You can empathise with both people in an altercation, even if one person's actions were just unfunny and the other person's actions were extremely violent. So anyway, I want to round things up by saying that the ethics of the Oscars were already compromised by the giving away of Scottish land in the so-called nominee goodie bags. The idea here is that by owning Scottish land, you can claim the title of Lord or Lady. But first of all, if you're tempted to do this, just don't. It's not cool and it's not funny. Second of all, it's highly likely that this land doesn't exist and you're being conned. And thirdly, if this land does exist, then you are taking away a valuable resource from communities that experience fuel poverty, lack of provisions, population decline, and lack of affordable housing. Instead of buying land for Scotland so that you can have the title of Lord or Lady, Google the Highland Clearances and then donate your money to a Highland Community Trust so that they can set up broadband or hydroelectricity or build houses for their citizens. And that concludes my rant. Oh no, the, the, there's one more thing that pissed me off about the Oscars. Along with other categories that the Academy doesn't think are interesting, they did not broadcast the award for best editing. You know, the practice that makes the entire production come together into a watchable thing. I am just exhausted by the Oscars this year and I wasn't even invited. Maybe one day. And you know, Instead of thanking anyone, or lecturing people, or trying to be funny, or trying to stand up for something, I would use my acceptance speech to just stand there in silence and look out at everyone. And then I'll go, see you next time!